Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, this puts it DIY, and I thought I'd do a different kind of video today, uh, kind of talking about how I write code for projects, because uh, I think that can be the most intimidating uh, part of doing electronics and things like that, um, especially if you have no formal experience, uh, which I, when I first started out, I didn't uh, have any of that. <laughs> and um, it can seem really overwhelming, uh, and I found that the best thing to do is to take everything and kind of bite-size pieces, and then take those pieces and kind of smush them together. So I thought I'd, um, I'm working on a prototype right now uh, with a servo motor and I'm kind of putting different uh, components in to control the servo motor and I thought I'd kind of walk you through how I've gotten them to work together so far and how I kind of got and just kind of my thought process in getting everything um, working in the code. Um, so first off is like deciding your platform and everything. I'm using Circuit Python for this. Uh, we've got a Feather M0, as you can see, hooked up to a breadboard, um, and we've got a continuous rotation servo motor right here. That means it goes around um, uh, uh, 360 degrees. It doesn't um, stop at like 180, uh, like with um, your more traditional servos. Uh, we've also got a switch here, and we've got a potentiometer. So my goal for this project is eventually gonna be to have this servo motor um, spin continuously, but I wanna be able to switch the direction with the switch, and I want to be able to control the speed with the potentiometer. Uh, and I want to do it in CircuitPython. So the first thing I do is look up any example code to see if I can like test my hardware really quickly with the platform I want to use. So I'm using CircuitPython. I went on Adafruit and I found that there was a uh, using servos with CircuitPython and Arduino, super handy. Uh, so they had some example code with the uh, motor library for CircuitPython. So I followed their instructions of getting that all set. And as you can see, they have special code for the uh, continuous rotation, um, and so it kind of explains how it works. Uh, it's, we're going to be using uh, values from negative one to one. Uh, zero to negative one is going to go in one direction. Uh, zero to one is going to go in another, um, and that corresponds to the speed as well. And so they have this example code here. Only instead of the servo angle, we're going to be throwing continuous throttle. Uh, and recently, I've been using Moo for my. As my cat goes crazy in the background. Um, I'm using Moo to do all of my um, programming for CircuitPython. Just because I like an IDE. I know like part of the whole uh, cool thing about CircuitPython is that you can just edit the text file. But personally, I like the comfort of an IDE. Uh, so Moo has been working for me really well. And so what I've done here in this first file is I've... Um, just load in that example code and I have it so that it's going to spin in one direction for five seconds, then I'm going to have it stop for 10, spin the other for five, stop for 10, then do half speed in that same direction for five and stop for 10. So I have that code loaded up on here right now. I just have the servo disconnected from power. So I'm going to plug it back into power. I'm using the USB because it's five volt. It could be in the stop portion of the code. Oh, there we go. So see, it starts up. And it stops. Uh, one thing I have noticed is with uh, going from throttling to stopping, I've noticed there can be a little bit of a um, some leftover current, so it spins a little bit when it does that. But as you can see, the code's working. Um, so the example code's working, and uh, so then we can kind of move on to doing the next portion. So now to move on from this example code, um, I want to try throwing in the switch first, because I think that'll be the most simple. Um, and with the switch, I want to be able to control the direction that the uh, servo is turning in. So looking at this example code, that means basically when the switch is turning is uh, set in one direction, I want it to go um, have a value of negative one. And when I want it to go the opposite direction, I want it to have a value of one. Uh, so if we look at the next file, that I made, I basically, as you can see, I copied and pasted um, this script to here and just commented out what I didn't need. I didn't need all of the example stuff uh, that was on the bottom. So what I did was I added in the switch as, uh, first of all, I declared the pin, declared an input, and made it a pull-up. And that's all I need to add in here. Uh, and so now we're going to the loop. Uh, and I know that it's going to depend on the switch's value whether or not the um, servo is going to go in, to keep it simple, let's just say clockwise or counterclockwise. So basically I'm going to be checking the switch's value. So I'm going to use an if statement. So I threw in if switch is high, uh, we're going to make it so that the throttle is going to negative one, so counterclockwise. 
and then else. Otherwise, if the switch is low, then we're going to just have it go clockwise. I really don't need this times one here because it's redundant, but just to keep it um, kind of like a sanity check, I will sometimes make things a little bit redundant in my practice code. And then when I publish or put it out there, I'll take things like this out. Like in the final version, I'll, I won't have this. Um, but for now, just keep things kind of standard when you're testing. I like to just keep things really simple and really like the same. So uh, to do this, because we're using Moo, we can just save it to the board because the board's connected to the computer. So I'm just going to hit save and it'll update it. And uh, when I save the code onto my computer, like I'll save all these files, I'll label them properly. But because CircuitPython looks for a file called main.py, that's why all of these are called that. So I can just hit save. So let's connect power back to the servo and see, see what's happening. As you can see, it stopped and it's kind of still running that first code. I've noticed with um, with Moo, it kind of helps if you close out the REPL, then open it up again and do Control D to reload. And now you can see it's just going, it's not stopping anymore. So let's try with the switch and you can see it just changed direction. And so it's working now. So that math of just changing the value um, and having it be connected to the switch's value is working. All right, so that concept works. So chances are in our final code, this, lot, this if statement will make it in and it will be fine. Um, so the next thing, as I said, I wanted to control was the speed. Um, and do then go use a potentiometer. And so we know that uh, negative one is full speed counterclockwise, one is full speed clockwise. So basically we're going to have the potentiometer tied to this one value. We make a new file and I just copy and paste everything that was here, throw into here. But even though I know the switch portion of the code is working, I'm going to comment that out because I don't want it to affect my test with the potentiometer. Um, I'm not ready to put them together yet. I like to test all individual aspects um, by themselves just to make sure everything's going to be okay. And then when I put them together, I know they worked individually and then I can kind of see what's conflicting when they, uh, when they meet for the first time. <laughs> so now we're having to import um, the analog stuff for the potentiometer because it's connected to analog pin zero. Um, I don't think I mentioned in the previous file, I also import all the digital stuff as well. But anyway, um, I left the switch stuff in here declared because that's not going to affect it if it's not called in the loop. That's fine. Um, but as you can see now, I've added in the pot. I've declared an analog input and pin zero. So I've thrown this function in to check the value of what will be the pot. So what it's going to do is it's take, going to take the analog value of the pin, which in CircuitPython is uh, the max analog value is 65,535. Um, so this comment is actually incorrect, uh, but so that's the analog portion that we're constantly dealing with. Uh, and since I'm dealing with a maximum value of one, I'm just going to divide it by 65,535. Um, so basically dividing the two numbers by themselves to get a return value of one, uh, cause we can never escape that, uh, grammar school, elementary school math, uh, but uh, so that's how we're going to get a value from zero to one uh, that's going to be uh, controlling the servo. So then in the loop, it's really simple. I'm just going to have it so that the throttle's value is this function. Um, and that's, uh, it's only going to spin in one direction. It's going to be clockwise because it's one. Um, and it will, um, it should, the speed should be affected by turning the pot. And then I throw a little delay in there. So let's save this one now and return power to the servo. And as you can see, it's going, but our pot is all the way down. So let's do that trick again to refresh the REPL, close it out, put it back in. And as you can see, I'm turning the pot and it's going faster. There's a little bit of leftover current, uh, so that's why I turned all the way down. It's not doing, it's still kind of spinning a little bit. Um, but it is working on 
kind of a basic level. So now we know that that works. We know that having the uh, board check the uh, value of the pot and having that control the speed of the motor works, uh, which is cool. So to recap, we know that that can control the speed and we know that this uh, with the switch can control the direction. So let's now try to take them and put them together. So that's in this file. <laughs> and all I do is copy and paste this and throw it into a new file and everything's going to be the same here. We're not changing everything. We're just kind of smushing everything together. Uh, and so as you can see, I've uncommented the, um, the if statement for the switch. And what I've added in is instead of having it be equal to one times negative one or one times one, I'm having it be the uh, value of the potentiometer and multiplying that by negative one or one. Again, we can get rid of that times one because it's redundant so that um, it will make it either a negative value, so that it goes in one direction, or a positive value, so it goes in the other direction. So let's load this onto the board now and see if we can control the direction and speed at the same time of the motor. So again, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna preemptively close out the REPL, REPL and, and in case you don't know, the REPL is a way to kind of uh, look at the serial monitor for the uh, for the uh, circuit python boards but let's add power back into the motor and it's not doing anything but our our potentiometer is turned all the way down so let's see we're turning up the pot and the motor is spinning and let's see if we switch the switch if it goes in the opposite direction and it does so now we can start doing some really fun stuff So it's working. Uh, so, so we start with the example code, and then we I threw in the switch, tested that out, got that working properly. Then I totally ignored the switch, kind of put that up to the side, threw in the pot, tested that to make sure it was pro working properly, and then combined the two concepts that I'd kind of prototyped up to the side to make this first version of the final code. Um, and obviously, like the comments are, I'm going to get rid of all this. I'm not going to keep in that times one because it's redundant, and I'll. I'll actually comment the code properly after, but that's kind of how I go about doing my code now. Uh, that's uh, I just do one piece at a time. It keeps things really simple, and it really keeps things from becoming overwhelming, which is nice. Um, and I definitely recommend it um, if you're feeling intimidated by code or you find that you jump in and you're trying to do a lot with your project and you have things you run into issues and bugs because um, you've got a lot going on. I like to just kind of piece everything out and then smoosh it together, make it a big old code sandwich, I guess. Um, so yeah, and this is a, an upcoming project uh, that hopefully you will see in about two weeks. Um, I'm really excited about it. I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet, uh, but uh, this is gonna be kind of the core uh, components. Uh, the only thing that's not in the circuit right now is I'm going to have a, um, the potentiometer I'm going to use is going to be one of those uh, clicky ones that can control can also act as a power switch, and that's going to control. The, that's also going to be hooked into the servos, and that's so that that noise I was getting on zero will go away, uh, and so that when I actually turn it to zero, it means it's off. Um, but yeah, uh, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you liked it, toss me a thumbs up, leave a question or comments down below. Uh, let me know if you're using Circuit Python, if you're also using Moo. I really like it so far. Um, I think it makes things a lot easier with CircuitPython. Um, when I started using it, I just felt a little bit more kind of centered. <laughs> and I also like that it kind of checks my syntax too, because you can check things. And like right now, I, I don't have this proper, it, I don't have this properly commented out. Um, and it will like tell you things like that, um, which is nice. I also like that it has the built-in REPL, makes things a lot easier. And um, you can kind of and I also like that I can switch between these windows really easily and load onto the board really easily as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.